Hello, folks. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. Um, I want to begin with some untruth telling by the Biden White House. And then we'll be joined by John Roberts to talk about some election issues in just a moment. And then Jonathan Turley about why Democrats don't want to let Republicans on the ballot. Anyway, first up, once again, Team Biden shows they are completely incapable of telling the truth about the economy or economic policy. So, celebrating a $34 trillion debt milestone, Joe Biden's press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, decided to blather on in the White House press room about, wait for it, hang on, oh yeah, blame the Trump tax cuts. They have caused the debt to rise to a new record. Of course, she offers up not one single number in support of this untruth, just the old authoritarian idea if you say something often enough, people will believe it. Well, as every Bidenomics poll shows, nobody's believing them. Here's what Jean-Pierre had to say. There's a trickle-down debt, if you think about it. Uh, Republican tax cuts are responsible about 90 percent of it, uh, of the increase in the debt as a share of the economy over the last two decades. You've heard the president speak to this, of what he has done to certainly lower, uh, lower the debt. He signed a legislation to lower uh, the deficit by $1 trillion. And then his agenda would cut the deficit another $2.5 trillion by making the wealthy pay their fair share. Now, this big lie should have been put to rest at least last November, if not way before, when economists from Harvard, Princeton, University of Chicago, and the U.S. Treasury, when they reported in a new National Bureau of Economic Research paper, after examining 12,000 corporate tax returns before and after the 2017 Trump tax cut bill that slashed the tax from 35 to 21, created bonus depreciation for business investment, incentivized repatriation for foreign income back to the U.S. In fact, they found business investment capital increased about 7.5% over the long run, leading to higher real worker wages and increased worker productivity. The study also found that after an initial decline in corporate tax revenues in the first couple of years, those were fully offset by revenue gains over the 10-year budget window. Numerous other studies have confirmed this blue ribbon support. In fact, former Obama advisor, my friend Jason Furman, he called the NBER study, quote, the most convincing estimates of the response of investment to corporate tax changes that I have ever seen, end quote. Thank you, Jason. By the way, when the Gallup poll last year asked people, whether the amount of federal income tax they pay is too high, too low, or just right, only 3% said taxes are too low. 60% said their income taxes are too high. The problem isn't that we tax too little. It's that the federal government spends too much. Joe Biden argues that his policies have cut budget deficits, and it's an assertion that has earned him a bottomless Pinocchio from The Washington Post. And the latest estimates from the Congressional Budget Office show a $2.7 trillion budget deficit by 2033. That's the end of the most recent 10-year budget window. Cumulatively, get this, Bidenomics will generate $20 trillion in additional deficits during the period. This according to the Congressional Budget Office. And as a share of the economy... Deficits will run 6.9% of GDP, the 30-year average, 3.6. Publicly held debt, well, that's going to rise to over $46 trillion over the 10-year period. And budget spending outlays, well, they will average 24% of GDP. Compare that to a 50-year average of only 20%. Thank you, Bidenomics. Now, there's a mighty big deficit and debt problem, but it does come from spending too much, not taxing too little. On top of all this, the National Association of Manufacturers has estimated that under Joe Biden, federal regulations have exploded to an estimated $3 trillion, falling disproportionately on small businesses. And according to the highly accurate Investor's Business Daily tip poll, only 34% of Americans say they're better off than they were four years ago. Even among self-identified Democrats, only half are willing to claim 
they're better off under a Democratic president. One key reason for this pessimism, Joe Biden's crisis of plunging affordability. Real average weekly earnings over the past nearly three years has fallen from $399 a week to $380 a week. Yes, that's a drop of 19 bucks or nearly 5%. Inflation has slowed, but prices are still significantly higher for essentials like groceries, gasoline, and electricity. And during the Trump tax cut years, after policies of lower taxes and deregulation, middle-class family incomes went up over $6,000. But during the Biden years, typical family incomes have dropped $4,000. Remember Reagan versus Carter in 1980? Are you better off than you were four years ago? Well, just saying, could be a repeat. And that's my riff.